Yeah, good evening, everyone. You are welcome to tonight's um, live class on uh, project management. And uh, we are still in, in project management components. This is the last component within the project management component, and that's uh, change management. So what is change management? Change management is an action a business takes to change or adjust a significant part of its organization. This may include company culture, internal processes, technology or infrastructure or other critical aspects. That is a change management. So when there is a change within an organization. The management needs to incorporate a change management activity or process. This will help to make sure that the change after the change um after the change initiative is being sustained so that's why there is this change management well companies trying to adopt a new system of doing things within the organization either they are adopting a new technology or adopting a new culture or new process there should be a sensitization managing the employees about the change that is coming change does not just uh, come you need to plan for the change that is coming in order to sustain that change. So that is what we mean by change management. For instance, when we want to implement a cloud technology from the on-premise technology, people have been working on that on-premise technology for a long time, and they are used to that. If you want to migrate your activity to the cloud, meaning that you are no longer be using uh, most of your uh, on-premise uh, infrastructures, you're going to be migrating to the cloud infrastructures. So many of the employees we struggle to use that cloud application. And as such, they are going to resist it. So you, you need to prepare the ground, you need to sensitize the employees of the benefits of that change that is coming. And this is where this uh, change management uh, is coming from. That is the perspective of the change management activity. So what are the types of change management? We have adaptive change management and we have transformational change management. Adaptive change Changes are small and gradual changes that takes place within a, a product of an organization or within the processes, workflow, 
and strategies over uh, a time. So it's a gradual change. It comes bit by bit. Example of such change is uh, implementing a new work from home policy. Is a small change. It comes bit by bit. Organizations start learning about it. Um, like, for instance, now every most of the organization here in Western world and even uh, all over the world are embracing working from home. The 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 companies they don't just uh, say okay everybody uh, start coming from home uh, start working from home despite the pandemic that made everybody to start working from home but most companies that are adopting it these days as a culture they start by giving out um from one day work from home, from two days working from home to test how it works. And they are still testing the, the process. So it is not a whole full change. And before such a thing, because a lot of people don't struggle to work from home, not everybody knows, knows how to, to use um, virtual communication like uh, Zoom and the rest of them to collaborate and work effectively. They are used to working in the office, conventional system of working. All of a sudden, you want to start, um, because this working from home is actually cost uh, effective. For instance, so many companies renting big infrastructures, big offices in central London. So many of them, after testing this work from home, they've shut their offices and they're saving a lot of money. Some of them have even sold up their offices to, to invest more in the business because working from home have turned out to become very effective. So these are the kind of changes. It comes gradually. So this is the adaptive change management and transformational change management. This is a transformation, uh, a, a large scale uh, change activity, a departure from the status quo, such as um, I use the cloud migration. Uh, on-premise migration. When a company wants to, to, to migrate from on-premise, they don't rule it out gradually, but gradually. You migrate all your, the, migra the migration um, is, uh, it, it, it takes everything because uh, it will be very difficult to, to migrate and still be working uh, from on premise. So it's a, a, a large scale. They, they migrate all their data from their, their on premise uh, infrastructure to the cloud, which is very massive. And in this situation, companies when migrated in a, in a situation like this, everybody starts uh, assessing the data from the cloud, no more from the on-premise. So it is a kind of change that uh, consumes the whole organization. Everybody tends to uh, you know, adopt this system. It is a change from the status quo. So, and another one is um, 
Another good example is launching a new brand product for the organization. Another, another, another good example is uh, expanding international. This is a massive change. For instance, if um, uh, MTN is now moving to Ghana, if MTN need to move to Ghana from Nigeria or from South Africa, they don't move gradually. They need to announce their presence in a very big way so that people will know that they have the capacity. So it's a big change. So they don't roll it out gradually. If it's a big company, they don't they try to, they tend to meet people, the, 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 uh, the country they are coming in to know that actually big organization is coming, uh, showcasing their brand in a very big way. So it's a, it's a large uh, change. And to do that, so many companies uh, need to sensitize their workers about that. If they need to move some workers from Nigeria to Ghana, they need to sensitize them. You can't just um, all of a sudden send people on transfer from one country. They have families. They, they need to sensitize them about this uh, international expansion because some people will, will move, will, will travel internationally for, for, for these activities and these people have families. So you need to sensitize them. You need to brief them. You need to carry them along. You need to prepare them for this change. So what are the key steps in the change management process. Number one is to prepare the organization for change. Change is not easy. So organization needs to be prepared to embrace this change. The change manager should sensitize the employees recognize and understand the need for change and to gain their buy-in. When you sensitize the employees very well, that's the only way you can gain their buy-in. Mind you, some of these employees have spent years in the organization. So when they raise their voice, their voice will be heard. When they say no, their no can, can, can be effective. So you need to buy, you need to play some politics. You need to sensitize them. You need to buy them over to support this change. That's why that's uh, preparing them, prepare their mind. You need to let them know the benefits. The, the organization and them, the employees of the organization, we benefit. They tend to gain from buying into this change. That's how you prepare them. If so many companies are now moving to the cloud and their company, they are, they are, they are not moving. You need to let the organization know the, the impact the negative impact, the competitive um, advantage of moving to the, these are the things you need to let them know. They need to know the game. They need to understand that the, uh, do a cost or benefit analysis, that the, the, the benefit outweighs whichever uh, cost or sacrifice. Draft a vision and plan for this change. The plan details should include strategic goals. What 
it's helped the organization to work towards what are the strategic goals? What are the, the strategic benefits the, 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 the company need to uh, gain from this uh, change? What, what is the, the, the vision? What is the roadmap? It should be stated. You need to uh, state the key performance indicator. How will the success of this change be measured? Because you can only say that there is a success if you can measure the success against some set standard or acceptance criteria or benchmark. These are the indicators you need to set. That can be uh, the, the percentage of employees that are willing to support this change. This can be an indicator. When 90% of, uh, even 80%, even 70% of the workforce are willing to, to adopt this change, is a success, it's a big success. Because everybody, very difficult to, to find that everybody will embrace the change. So when you have like 70% ready to, to embrace the change, that's a success. So you must state the performance indicators to measure the success. Then what are the project key stakeholders and team. Who will this mean the, the, the stakeholders or the team or the uh, members of the organization that will oversee the task of implementing this change? Not everybody, they are so you must have ownership of this uh, process. Some people should own this activity and they should be stated. And what is the project scope. The project scope means the area to be covered within this change management initiative. What should be included and what should not be included. There should be a distinct um, a boundaries on what should be included and what should not be included. When you draft this plan, the next thing is to implement the change. Follow the change, follow the step outlined within, within to implement the required change. All these plans you've um, stated, you need to follow them, follow them very well and uh, you once you follow them, make sure that uh, you have uh, you, you look out for for roadblocks. Roadblocks means uh, resistance. When you are implementing, there should be a resistance. That is, these are the roadblocks. Some um, so many employees will not buy in, and so many of them. They will tend to become a barrier to this change. They are, they are, look out for resistance. When there is a change process, there is always resistance. And plan to prevent them or remove them or have a plan to mitigate them once you identify such a roadblocks or resistance. Once implemented, embed changes within organization, culture, and practice. When you um, implement a change, it does not end there. You can't just implement a change and just go away. It must be embedded. 
within the organization. Once the change initiative has been completed, the change managers must prevent a reversion to the prior status uh, state or status quo. You find a situation that um, uh, a particular application has been discommissioned within the, the, the organization, it's saying that nobody should use this particular application again. But you find out that some people will still go back and start using it, more especially if they want to do their tasks and they are struggling with the new application. They will go back. So how do you embed? Make sure you discommission entirely the old system. Make sure that the old system is no longer accessible within the organization. That everybody needs to follow suit. Everybody needs to uh, imbibe the new culture. If it's a, um, a report, make sure that nobody submits a report with, through the old formats. For instance, if you are using a particular template <clears throat> and then you introduce a new template, make sure that no report is being collected through the old template. Every report after the change must be through the new template. That's how you you, you you embed this change within the organization. Anything that will make the old system to come back should be discommissioned. And when you imbibe this change within the organization and uh, the change uh, is flowing, then it's time to conduct a review and an analysis result. You need to review the whole exercise and uh, uh, know the general feeling about the exercise. How do you do that? Ask some questions like, where the project goal we are met. So if the project goals were met, if the if the if the respondent they say yes, can this success be replicated elsewhere? If the, the project goal were not met, then what went wrong? You need to find out through a review. And when you gather the, the reports or the data from your review and analysis and the analyze, then you should be able to know the the how the 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 sources, the level of sources, what the people are saying, their view. And that will help you to continue to manage the change. Because change initiative or process is a continuous process. You keep on managing the change, improving on the change. And that's the best way to drive a change and manage a change. If you have any question, you can come up with your question.
Any question, class? Okay. Well, um, if there is no question, this um, particular class will end on um, this uh, change management because I want to start a fresh topic tomorrow. I want to start a fresh topic, which is um, project management techniques. It's going to be a fresh topic. I don't want to mix the topic with this one. I want this to, to be on its own. So, if you don't have any question, then uh, this class will come to an end and I encourage you to try to attempt your, your assignment. The only way to learn this IT is by doing it practical. Relaxing and listening alone will not help, will not make you an IT professional. You might think some of these things you are seeing, you might think that is easy, but when you want to implement it, you find out that it's not easy. So you start trying it out. So start creating something. When you are, when I ask you to create, create something, create, even if you don't get it, try, try it out. When you try it twice, you find out that you get it. So I encourage you to participate in any practical because this is going to be more of practicals. A lot of practicals are coming. They're going to be is, is in my in my classes is always a, a practical oriented um class. So it's going to be the, the practical aspect of, of it you will soon uh be coming out both in this project management and in business analysis it's all it's all about practical although it's not um, the prog programming language uh, aspect it's just uh, but it's a practical so you have to start creating something so I thank you for joining this class and I wish you a good night's rest. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.